Hello everyone, Trading Company Extern21 with you and I'm its director Oleksiy Zirka. Just a few days ago we have completed the opening of uh, our legal entity uh, here in China and that's why I decided that right now it's the right moment to make such a video where I will explain you in details uh, all processes, all procedures that we made, all uh, how long it took, how much we paid in order to open this company. So let's start. Firstly, I would like to tell you some words about the type of legal entity that we opened. There are many uh, different types of um, private liabilities companies here in China with foreign capital. However, I will focus more only on one type because all information about the others you can find on the internet anyway. I will focus on WFOE. Wally Foreign Owned Enterprise. What does it mean? It's a company which is registered in China but has 100% of capital possessed by a foreign investor. Foreign investor, it can be a physical person like me and you or a legal entity like your company in your home country. If you want to decide, if you decided to open WFOE on your own name as a physical investor, in this case you need only your passport. But, however, if you decided to open it on the name of your home company, company in your home country, in this case you need to provide some specific documents. First of them is certificate. of registration certificate of registration second company statement when you get both documents you need to receive the approval from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in your country, then approval from notary. After this, you need to bring it to specialized uh, translation bureau, which uh, who will translate it from whatever language, for example, English to Chinese. And finally, you bring the full package of documents with translation to the Chinese embassy or consulate in your country in order to get the stamp from consulate or embassy. When you get it, you are ready to send these documents to China to start the registration. However, okay, so now we move from your country, your home country, to China. What do you need to What do you need to do the first? Tell me. The first thing that you need to do when you are ready to send these documents to China you need to decide where you want to open because in China there are different free trade zones uh, for now there are 11, around 11 or 13 free trade zones mainly they are pretty similar according to taxation according to their role uh, to foster foreign investments however they can, be, they can have some differences for example some, some zones uh, encourage uh, can encourage specific domains um, maybe some of them can encourage heavy industry trade or manufacturing some can encourage tourism like the example of Hainan free trade zone which is now in process of developing and preparing to open uh, or some of them can encourage uh, trade with electric appliances like Shenzhen like Tianhai free trade zone in Shenzhen so you need to understand which of them fits to you the most. After, you need to pay attention to few, I advise you to pay attention to few specific factors, how it's more efficient to choose the right free trade zone. First, uh, localization. Localization, uh, where it's located, uh, let's talk like in more in more general um, way, where it's located geographically. For example, if you're trading 
with Western Europe. In this case, it's better that this zone will be located in south of China because this is kind of end point from which the uh, products go to, from China uh, to Europe. It's like the closest distance between South China, for example, uh, Guangdong province and Western Europe. Then you need to think about factories. Uh, probably you already uh, have business relations with some factories in China or you already know which domain, uh, with, in which domain you want to work and many factories in China are uh, located depending from the domain in which they work. In this case you need to track what kind of factories are located nearby of the free trade zone that you want to choose. Third part is costs. very important part right for business and here I talk about different type of costs firstly salaries for example um, you need to track what are the minimum and average salaries in the free trade zone that you want potentially to choose uh, let's give examples our company is located in Nansha and it's just around 40 minutes from free trade zones uh, in Shenzhen and the cost for salaries is like three or four times less than in Shenzhen. Other very important cost is uh, real estate. Yeah, well, if you want to rent an uh, office or warehouse. Also, if uh, there is a place where it's three, four times cheaper, it can be an interesting factor to make a final decision, which can influence your final decision. And fourth part is uh, future potential of the zone, the perspective, so let's say potential. If you open free trade zone in China, you need to think also like with perspective in let's say for example 10 years, because normally you don't do it just for like few months or one year, you want to start to launch your business in China and to like play on the growth of this country. In this case, it's important for you to understand whether the zone where you will be located will grow or whether it already stopped its growth. For example, the sign of high uh, costs of a zone is kind of a uh, stimulus for you to show that probably the zone is, this zone is already matured and probably the growth is almost stopped or probably even will decline. In this case, it's more interesting for you to track some new zones which potentially will develop in this future because the development of such zones can bring the development for your company as well and you will develop together with the zones. So these are four main points to which you need to pay attention when you decide to choose the right location for your company. After this, when you decided where, you need to decide with who, with the help of who you will open the company. Because I uh, really encourage you, I advise you to use the services of agent company as they know the uh, market much better, they know legal, uh, legal um, procedures much better and of course they know the language, they know how to create documents, how to make it. Uh, like it's really pretty important. I cannot imagine how without knowing the language you will be able to assemble the needed list of documents in order to start and to get your registration license, uh, business license. In this case also when you uh, decide which agency to choose of course one of the most important factors is the price but not only because different agencies uh, give different uh, list of requirements. For example, some of them say that you need to be present at some steps of registration. In this case, you need to include the transportation costs, uh, hotel, uh, meal, uh, food, etc., etc., which like will be quite expensive if you live in Western Europe or in the US, for example. And some of them uh, are able to make the registration 
only with photocopy of your passport. In this case, you don't need to come, so also pay attention to this. Another thing I need to tell you about the agency, before you start to work with them, I again encourage you to create a contract. And the contract is not just a fixed structure. You can participate in the modification of different parts of these contracts in order to make it more favorable for you. Like the most important, of course, is the uh, timing of contract, is the um, part of uh, price, how much it costs, when the payment will occur, whether you pay 50% uh, from the beginning, 50 is the end, or 30 is the beginning. So, like, you can negotiate all this with the company. Then, when you decided where to open, with which agency to work, you send the documents from your home country to this agency, also together with the photocopy of your passport. The agency verify if the documents are okay, and they start to create the documents in Chinese for uh, registration and getting your business license. So here, uh, there are pretty uh, big list of documents that they will provide you, but among them, the most important, I will tell you like the list of the most important. Firstly, the first thing about your company, I guess it's the name, right? So here is the important part because like if you open company abroad, you would like that the name have some probably uh, signification or probably it will uh, it need to be uh, kind of the same as your home company. So in this case, you would like to participate, I guess, in the creation of the company name, but there is a specific structure for the name of the company in China. Let's take example of our company. Guangzhou, it's the beginning, it's the place where we're located. Um, It's our name, our, the name of our Ukrainian company, the name we transferred to China. It's the trading, it's uh, the activity which we do. We are traders, we are trading. Um, so, limited company. So, this is the structure which is compulsory when you want to establish the name of your company starting with the location, your name, your activity, and company limited, your uh, type of company, limited company. Again, I will also would like to discuss, to provide you an example of Chinese name, because it's also important, the documents that the agency will provide to you will be in Chinese. And if you open company in China, and for example, if you're thinking about importing, uh, like exporting to China, and importing it from your company, it's quite important for you what Chinese people will perce perceive by looking on your company name. And in this case, it's important for you what is what will be the Chinese name of your company. And also, let's give you an example, uh, and let's work on the example of our um, company. So, Guangzhou, I run extern is phonetic uh, translation. Archie twenty one. Um, Maui trading. Yoxian Limited Don't say company So, like, these parts Like Guangzhou, uh, Maui, uh, Yoxian, Don't uh, say You will not be able to choose However, these parts is to choose up to you And here, there are two possibilities How it's better for you Like uh, advices how it's better for you to choose in the best manner this part 
Firstly is phonetics, yeah? You can choose it, like, for example, the name of your company in your home country. By phonetic meaning, you can transfer it in Chinese uh, characters. So, external for us is iron. We use the help of Chinese people, a Chinese person, to make it. And, like, for them, really, external iron has uh, kind of same... Um, both characters have the same phonetic part and uh, RC21 is just complete translation. However, you can also add some meaning inside the characters because in China, each character has a specific meaning. And it's also the part of our name because, for example, this character, uh, Run, in Chinese, it has a meaning of a profit. And what is the goal of trading company? Is to buy and to resell it in order to get profit. So also there is kind of uh, meaning of uh, inside the name of your company together with a phonetic uh, uh, close, closeness. Okay, then when you decided about company, also what I need to say about uh, company name, uh, you have up to eight possibility possibilities, uh, eight different types of name that you can provide to the agency. Then they will check if it's available so all these eight names you need to classify in the order from the most uh, uh, wanted most uh, desired name up to number eight which is like the least uh, desired and then they will see for example if number one is already occupied they they will check number two number two occupied number three and so on after the name when you decide one of the also important documents is uh, regarding your social capital. So, social capital. So, in China, normally, compared to all other countries, this social capital is pretty big. Uh, for example, we take example of a trading company, which we did. It starts from 100 uh, thousand dollars if you want to open a company if you want it to be registered approved you need to indicate the social capital at least of one hundred thousand dollars for us we indicated one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars according to our business plan and projections however don't be afraid it doesn't mean that you need to put this money on the account of your company in order to make it registered not at all it was like this before, but now it's already uh, uh, this procedure is uh, eliminated. And now you can, you just say that I will, like, you will put this number and you say, I will provide it to my company uh, according to like next uh, 40 years. So during next 40 years or 50 years of operation, you will need to put on your company this sum of money that you will indicate before. Uh, the only thing, like you don't uh, oblige to put it uh, like uh, for during the first two years or something like this, the only thing that is regulated is that if you still didn't put all money on your uh, registered social capital, in this case 10% <clears throat> of your annual profit will be allocated to social capital and also you need to pay attention to it to consider it when you make your budgets then third part <coughs> third part is uh, about uh, the supervisor supervisor uh, because in order to open the company there should be at least two person and uh, right now it's possible that both person can be foreigners possessing foreign citizenship uh, however there is kind of uh, uh, sayings talk, talks among people that if your supervisor is a Chinese citizen it could probably simplify some operations however we don't really know if it's true we didn't uh, we were not able to check it 
but there is this uh, miss in the among the businessmen here in China. But it's up to you to choose. You need to know that you have the right, the possibility to make two foreign uh, citizens as a legal representative and supervisor of your company. Number four is uh, regarding the scope of your business. Business scope. Also, it's a very important part because before you open the company, you need to understand what you want to do. And uh, according to this, you need to uh, elaborate your, determine your business scope. Uh, it's quite limited. And uh, for example, in Chinese, um, according to Chinese rules, it needs to be around 100 Chinese characters. However, you can try to make it uh, like bigger. In this case, the probability that they will accept your candidature will be lower. So, a smaller the scope, easier to open. Uh, number five, and also, of course, after registration, you will be able to change the business scope. However, it's not always obvious. Sometimes uh, you need really to uh, operate more uh, during more uh, during longer duration in order to change something sometimes it can really be rejected so it's really important to choose the main scope before uh, you register number five is um, renting uh, like lease documents renting documents Branding document. So, uh, yes, in order to open the company, you need to have office in China. However, it don't need to be physical, real office. You can talk with the agency with who you are working, and they can provide you virtual kind of office. It means that they uh, inscribe you in the part uh, of their office. And in this case, uh, because by law, each office can be divided in eight smaller parts. In this case, one of these smaller parts is allocated to you. And then you can use it as your, as your registration office and this helps you to obtain your business license. All these documents, like agency preparing in Chinese, after they send it to you, you check it. Also, uh, important part here is the kind of uh, status of the company. Status. So like it's the big document which assembles all these parts and it's like uh, all information about your company, your stages, uh, yeah. Then uh, the agency prepare it, they send it to you, to your home country by electronic, uh, by mail for example. And then you need to put a stamp of your home company on these documents. Here again be always in contact with agency when you do this because uh, some pages require uh, more than one stamps and everything is in Chinese so if you uh, forgot to put a stamp in a specific place and you send it by mail um, to uh, China like uh, by physical mail in this case, they will be for, you will be forced to make it all again if uh, something missing. So I really advise you only send it to agency after uh, they approved that everything is okay. When you send the documents to agency, again there are two ways depending uh, which agency you choose and where you decided to open. Uh, so first way is that your presence is mandatory in order to uh, give all documents for registration. And the second way is your presence uh, not mandatory, it's enough, not compulsory, is enough just to send the photocopy of your passport. So if it's the first case and you need to come to China, in this case you need to um, add all additional expenses uh, to your budget, which is uh, quite substantial as well. It's, uh, I would say, around $1,000, depending from where you are coming. After the registration process uh, takes around one week, then you will obtain your business license. Uh, the business license will uh, look like this. 
will look like this. Uh, all information that I said here will be mentioned in it, like business scope, capital, uh, like who is legal advisor, everything. When you get this, it's uh, the most important part is to get this. Then everything is pretty easy. Your agency will uh, get the export import license for you. Uh, they will also register you at tax bureau. Finally, when you have all this, it's time to register bank account. Here again, for bank account, normally you need to come to China. Uh, however, if you, for example, planning to come to China after like few months uh, after registration, like the opening of bank account, it can wait. It took uh, around uh, one week to open. Uh, when, uh, like, when we talk about different tap types of banks in China, there are two, like that me personally, I can advise you is Bank of China or ICBC. You can open an uh, account in any of them. Probably Bank of China is considered as the biggest, the most reliable. After, firstly, you open a bank account in uh, RMB, in uh, Chinese currency. And then if you need uh, additional currency, for example, trading company, for sure you need uh, other currency, for example, dollar. In this case, you need to open second account in this bank to be able uh, to receive uh, dollars to get your SWIFT code uh, and all details. Um, also about office, when after registration, you will decide to change the address from virtual to the real, this uh, service will cost you around 300, 400 dollars just because I forgot to tell about this. So after you get uh, your bank account uh, registered, both bank accounts, that's all. You have the fully equipped company ready to operate. Uh, the last thing that you need to obtain is to get your work visa. In this case, you just uh, come to China, you provide them this business license, in addition, uh, other doc of course, passports, etc. But in addition, other valuable document is your uh, high education diploma, which uh, like influence the duration of uh, the work visa that you will get at the first time. For example, if you uh, don't have um, high uh, education diploma, in this case, uh, your first visa can be for like from three to six months but if you have it uh, your first work visa can uh, durate like uh, from one year to two years which is better of course so like this all are the most important parts procedures of opening company in China let's like to summarize first in timeline uh, to receive documents in your home country according uh, to like the certificate and registration of your home company as I said at the beginning according to different uh, countries it can really uh, last from uh, like uh, one two days in some of them like us uk according to some information that i get it can from few days up to several weeks so let's say uh, two weeks in average for us it took three weeks in ukraine two weeks to get the documents in this time you are looking for area where you want to be located and for uh, uh, the right agency then you receive documents you send it to China uh, the agency preparing a contract preparing or documents so again around one week three weeks in total then they send documents to you you need to stamp it and you send it back to the agency again one week uh, already one month in total after the registration process it takes around one week to get all like export import licenses tax bureau i would say again one week uh, bank account plus one week finally in total you will get seven weeks let's uh, say like go up to two months like just in case you never know so up to two months it's enough to open the company in china regarding the budget uh, for company, uh, your home company translation, this is the most um, expensive part. It costs up to $800. Then when documents arrive to China for the next expense is uh, uh, renting uh, document, 
to get your virtual office is around $800 per year. So again, in addition, we would say $1,800 for a boss. Pay agency fees, which are around um, additional $1,000. So already $2,800. However, another expense, possible expense, if your presence is compulsory for some steps, in this case, you need to add flight tickets, a meal, hotel, all additional expenses. So it's already almost 4,000. So for the budget, up to 4,000 if your uh, presence is needed, is how much you need to spend to open company in China. All this according to the state of the situation right now, August 2009. According to the trend, with time it becomes easier, cheaper and faster. We will see. That's the most important information. Me, I hope you like this video. I really hope that it will be useful for some of them. I completely understand that the subject of this video is pretty specific and uh, probably like not a lot of people will watch it till this moment, but I hope if you uh, now watching at this moment, it means you almost finished the video and I'm really thankful. I just want to say if you really like it, let's just put the like, subscribe because we will post um, some additional videos soon regarding uh, our uh, daily life of traders here in China about how it happens all like how it is in re reality and yeah that's it trade with extern 21 or become partner i really i'm will be pleased if uh, this video will um, tr give answer to some people regarding the own uh, opening of the company in china and especially if it will help some people to open the company in this case everything what i did it will be like refunded. Thank you very much. I wish you a good day. Bye.